kitchen again, but uh, not for long today because what I want to do is, um, I think there's a bit of a clue here with Rocky, um, I'm going to take you for a little walk up to the plot. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I would usually go in the car and I would usually make up some excuse like, well I might be carrying stuff back or I need to carry stuff there or I need to go somewhere else on the way back or there. But you know what? We've got so many beautiful walks sort of beyond the back gate, but I just thought it would be nice for you to see a little bit of uh, context really, see where the allotment's situated. So, <clears throat> I chose today, which is Wednesday I'm filming this, because on the weather forecast it says it's going to be ever so nice, really sunny. I don't know if you can see the weather from there, but you probably gather the fact that it's quite grey. So I've got my raincoat with me, I've got my little uh, water bottle, and, uh, and in a second I'll have Rocky. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to film little bits of the journey there and hope you enjoy it. One of the reasons we moved to this area was um, we've literally got the canal here on the back doorstep. And this is the Trenton Mersey Canal. And even in the middle of December, on quite a gloomy day, there's Rocky. It's just beautiful. And out of all the beautiful places along the canal, the swan every year decides to make a nest right there, right next to the back of the industrial estate. And every year the local people watch out for her. We see how many eggs she's got. We see how many cygnets hatch. And you know, it's such a lovely thing. They really are part of the community. And uh, yeah, lovely thing to have on your doorstep. And here they are. Hello, you two. Nothing for you today. Rocky is keeping well out of the way. <laughs> and there's so much character on the canal. This is one of our friends' boats, and if you just look in the distance there, they've got an old station box in their garden. Lots and lots of history there. Very, very interesting people. Really good. But for now, I'm going to take you under this bridge. I want to look at the view from up there. So there we are, looking back the way we've come. Not very far. And it's a shame it's such a grey day because you imagine in the summer when you get these beautiful still days, the reflections in the canal are just absolutely beautiful. When it's iced up, you know, a different atmosphere again. And when it's snowing, just incredible because of course everything goes hushed, you know, and it seems like the whole thing's asleep, but really, real treat real privilege to be able to just have this on your back doorstep. Anyway, enough of that, we've got to go over railway line next. by this old um, station building here. If you look at the roof, it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at those tiles. And I mean, I think there is like some sort of preservation order or some sort of society raising money to get it restored. But since I've been here, which is about 25 years, it's pretty much looked like this. But just beyond that is the ultimate behemoth of railway bridges. <laughs> 
on then rock, go on. There we go. Follow that dog. <laughs> Poor lad. There we are. I'm a little bit slower. Rocky now. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Up and over. You know, you feel like you're actually moving on a train going under these um, beams, don't you? But right at the other end there, we've got that big patch of green. And that is Stone's historic common plot. And that is where we're heading for next. the common plot. I don't know if you can pick up, we've got the railway line behind us, uh, the trustees of Stone Common Plot. So there's people actually do try and keep it nice. Um, but yeah, it's a really historical place and it's got something to do with, if we look here, I'll show you where we are now. We are here. Are we here? No, we're not, we're here. We're gonna go up to this, lay this gate up here. But this bit here called Mudley Pits, which I'll show you when we get up there, has got quite an interesting history behind it. So uh, as we go up, I'll tell you about it. But yeah, we're gonna go up this line here, then down through the woodland, through this way, past the outlanes, and then to the parlor, which I'll tell you about when we get there. But yeah, as you can see, there are a myriad of different ways that you can go. Um, and in fact, the kids used to, when they were younger, they used to cross this to get to school. You know, what a beautiful way to go to school. So, yeah, let's go and have a little look. I'll get through here. It's obviously a really, really popular spot with dog walkers in particular, because look at the lovely open ground they've got to do. So let's just see Rocky. Where is he? And we're going to release the hound. There we go, Rocky, you're released. Hmm, it's not looking very released, is he? Looks like he's going to go bad. <laughs> Let's start walking up. Again, apologies again for this being wibbly wobbly, but I haven't got a gimbal. And they're too expensive really to invest in just for the odd video. So, you're going to have to put up with my handheld camera. But if we look over here, oh my goodness, I thought there was some blue sky there. It's actually grey. If you look over here, these great big trees that sort of punctuate the plot. I've taken so many photos of them during my time here, but they're conker trees. So they are absolutely beautiful when they suddenly burst into life in spring. Um, the cows all shelter under them, under the summer rains. Then of course you get your, your chestnuts, your horse chestnuts off them. And it just, again, it's part of the scenery. We're seeing it more or less naked, really, at the moment. There's not a lot there. I hope Rocky's not going to do anything in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, that's not quite as bad as it could have been. Um, but yeah, it just, the, the scenery changes with the seasons. And again, it just keeps you a little bit connected with nature and what's going on elsewhere. So let's carry on walking up. It's only a slight hill here, but once you get to the top, you'll see the difference. One of my favourite houses, I think it's such a storybook house. I'm not going to zoom in because that's a bit rude, but just beyond there. And that's the sort of house if I ever was bequeathed enough money to buy it, I would love it. It looks like a storybook house, but it also looks very much like a haunted house. But uh, yeah, just to have this on its doorstep, absolutely gorgeous. But I haven't got that money and I'm never going to live there. So I'm going to go up the hill instead. <laughs> okay, you can see at the top of this half of the plot here, those uneven hillocks, I'm going to call them, at the top, which are known as Mudley Pits. And if you picked up on the poster at the bottom on the sign, it gives you the, uh, you know, it's not 100% true, but it's something that we sort of like to think happened, 
which was in the mid 18th century. Bunny Prince Charlie had reached, where did he reach? He got to Derby and the government thought that he was going to come through stone in this area. So they, <laughs> they dug all these big pits and basically battlements and armaments and armaments, battlements to uh, hide behind, to be there to pounce on Bonnie Prince Charlie's army when he came past. So all of this was created, this raised bit, which is why it's in the middle of the common plot, it would have otherwise just been flat. Um, and yet he didn't come, he went a different way. <laughs> But you know what it has done? It's provided an absolutely brilliant place for sledging when it snows. So yeah, I think uh, the opposing government can be forgiven for making a bit of a mess because uh, we've had hours of fun up there with the sledge. And there's my little seat. I'm gonna sit down, have a little chat and admire the view. And here I am, sitting on my little bench, admiring the view. No leaves on the trees. That actually means you can see further afield. So over there, we've got a spot called Barliston Downs, which is owned by the National Trust. Um, unlike many of their places, it's free to get in. And it's basically just a lovely woodland walk, like a circular walk with lots of other crisscross walks going through a bit like the common plot but it's got the addition of a stream running right through the middle so perfect place for picnics and walks in the summer just a lovely place to be can't work out styles. He'd rather go through there to be honest than um, through this. <laughs> Mind you, if I could, I probably would as well, but now he's got himself stuck, look. He's gonna have to come back out. Rocky, come on. Come on. Come on. This way. Oh. Here we go. Back on the flat again and again. Some lovely little seating areas. Yeah, from here, pretty much through the whole of the walk to the end, it just gets absolutely covered in bluebells. Oh, there's a squirrel. You see the squirrel? Oh, that's so crocky, didn't? They always outwit him by getting up to the top of the tree before he's reached them. Oh, I'm going to wear this Mr. Trick. Oh, look, more sheep. They're saying hello. And we're heading back up onto the path we diverted from before. I'll just take you up to this gate and show you the other half of the common plot. The other side of uh, the muddly pits, if you like. Okay, you can see the tops of the trees in the distance there. 
So you can see that they were that much higher up on this side. And then again, we've had, we've actually had a couple of trees felled recently, they've become unstable. But then there's this huge field, common plot, grazing land on this side again, which is the one that the kids used to walk to to go to school, is the one if I hadn't gone the woodland way I would have carried on over to get to the little gate that takes us to the allotment. But what a lovely expanse of land. Okay, and this brings me out onto what's known as the parlour. And Rocky's seen something interesting in there. Now, what we normally have in here are two horses. You're not allowed to feed them, but they're very, very friendly. They do come up and like a bit of a tickle. Um, that's some of their shelter there. But yeah, that's always nice to see. Behind me is the uh, hay meadow. Again, it's a different way I could come. I might come again in the summer because when that is full of flowers, it's like a proper wild flower meadow. meadow. Um, and it's just beautiful right through spring, summer, autumn, when of course all the hay, everything's changing colour. Just gorgeous. But for now, that gate is pretty much the end of our journey. So we'll get up to there and I'll sum you up. Okay, I'm going to leave you there. Well, not leave you there. You're actually attached to a car <laughs> gate and the tripod's got a bit wonky. So yeah, I'm on a bit of a hill anyway, but never mind. Um, I'm going to trot off to the allotment, which is just down there, a couple of minutes down that lane, go and see the chickens, pick up a couple of eggs for my dinner and uh, not retrace my steps, but I'm going to do a loop. So I'm going to go back across the common plot over the half that um, I just pointed out at the top end of the path here. Uh, so Rocky can have a really good run. And then I think I'm going to deserve a nice cup of tea and a poached egg on toast. So I'm going to leave you there. As I say, come along to the Instagram page, come along to the Facebook group. And if you really want to, you can subscribe. That'd be a great thing to do. Um, but I hope you're all well and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.